Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. As some of you may have seen the video I did on ideas for motorizing a Dobsonian telescope. In that video, you saw this buggy that I made out of a hand truck. It was very useful. The Dob would sit in here when you had to mount it on an equatorial platform. If you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. Well now I've got another idea. I've built a scope buggy for a G11 and a C-Gem Celestron mount. Well now I've got two mounts and I currently have the C-Gem on the scope buggy that you see in a video posted here on Dakota Starry Nights. And so what I thought was Perhaps a guy could take a regular hand truck like this and make a buggy for a scope out of it. And that would really simplify things because the wheels are already there. And you could pick these up at a building supply store for about $30, $40, which was about what this cost. So I'm going to remove this box and make some modifications here in order to mount a G11 onto this. The other advantage I'm trying to achieve is that once this is down on the ground, like this, and when we level it, get it nice and level with the same bolt and nut system that I developed for the scope buggy, it will allow the equatorial head to sit nice and low, just enough to where we can clear the ground and any other obstructions with the counterweight bar. And the reason why I'm trying to go for this is two nights ago I was out in the Badlands imaging with a buddy of mine, Chris. It was a little breezy and at the longer focal lengths or even at the short focal lengths we were getting a lot of movement. As a result I had to remove the dew shield from the Edge 8 in order to reduce some of that movement of the breeze. Finally though around 10.30 things quieted down and we were back to good tracking subs that I pulled in for the first hour or two were pretty much useless because of all the movement that the wind was causing. So my idea is to get this thing low to the ground and then I have a wind brakes. It's sort of like a beach umbrella that you lay down on the ground so that this is like in a shell protected from the wind that a guy can do it on even slightly breezy nights. Uh, but we'll get to that beach umbrella idea later on in the video and you'll see what I'm talking about once we build this thing. So let's take a look at the G11 and see what I've done to it to get it ready to adapt to the hand truck. So here's the G11 tripod with the equatorial head and mounting base removed. Apparently they make these to where you can put different kinds of equatorial heads on here because there are multiple screw holes in order to bolt whatever configuration you're shooting for. This is a pretty nice and substantial tripod. It has the folding legs, fold these up, which are pretty nice, really pretty heavy duty. But I'm trying to get to a situation where a guy can just wheel the platform out in the field and then wheel it into the truck and be done with it and leave the scope and everything on there because I've been using the scope buggy in that way. Look at the video where I've uh, modified a truck using some ramps to get the buggy up in there. It saves so much time and here when you're at home in the backyard wheeling the whole platform in and out is just a real time saver uh, and it's just a joy and then all your settings are saved. You don't have to reset everything up every time. The scope buggy normally sits right here and then I open up this garage door and wheel the whole platform right out and it's a snap. So now let's take a look at the equatorial head for the G11. Okay, so here's the equatorial head for the G11. As you can see here, there are numerous holes that a guy can fasten this down with. And then once this is fastened down, you have your control uh, module that sits right here. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And then the head itself sits down right inside of here, just like that. And then, so my idea is to build a box to where I can mount this bottom part onto 
the hand truck and then you have your equatorial head sitting in here and you can do your normal uh, polar alignment uh, adjustments here with this head and then of course the control module sitting right there. So now that you know where we're going to try to go with this, let's take a look at the first step of getting that hand truck modified. And I'm sure you could do this with a C-Gem as well with just a little bit of creative approach. It's not going to be much different. Basically the approach is going to be the same so if it works for a G11 it should easily work for a C-Gem as well. Okay, let's go to the next step. Okay, I've got the bottom of the equatorial head for the G11 getting ready to kind of put it together to set it on top of the buggy. I was noticing the way they've got this made is there's a pinhole right here and that pinhole is for this pin here on the brass azimuth adjustment. And the way you adjust azimuth is you turn this and it goes left and right. Now it's really smooth. I like the way that works as far as the adjustment. But there's one thing and that is the way they've got these dogs here that you tighten down. They fit right there like that. And now you see what happens here when you try to tighten this or loosen it and this is right in the way. This is only if you have the upgrade to where you've got these quick removal screws. Uh, the ones that come with it are, are an Allen head wrench and a lot of guys replace those because if you're breaking your mount in and out and now you got to fumble in the dark for an Allen head wrench it gets to be a real hassle and then you drop the thing in the grass and you know been there done that. So what we're going to do before we take this any further is we're going to drill a hole up here in order to accommodate this pin and I measured it it takes a 3 8 inch bit and so we're going to find center, drill that up there so we can get this to where this now goes this way. So we don't have the problem of having these knobs for the quick release of the equatorial head to the tripod. And uh, be sure to dry fit it before you put it back together to make sure that it's going to work. I just had to re-drill it a little bit deeper. It wasn't quite deep enough. And also, you're going to want to do this on a drill press. I would not try to freehand this. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this. I've got it temporarily on a 5x5 five five piece of vinyl fence bolt, but this is only temporary. Uh, we're going to make this uh, out of uh, wood, uh, probably 2x6. I've got it right about here in order to accommodate the jacks. I want it centered over the jacks. The jacks are going to be right here. I can only bring it down this uh, far because we've got the bracing here for the wheel. So we're going to have the two screw jacks right here and one here on the north side. The reason why we want it that way is so that at any time when this slews, the uh, counterweight is always going to be on two jacks because you'll have one here and here. If it goes this way, one on this side and the other side. This is the same way you would set up your tripod for any equatorial mount. So we'll put a jack somewhere here in the middle and then one on each end. And as you can see, this just barely clears. It's enough. It gives us three inches or so clearance off the bottom and there's no problem with affecting the way this is going to slew. And you can see how low the profile is to the top of the equatorial saddle there, we're looking at about three feet. So that tripod, totally collapsed, is measuring 31 inches. So we've cut that back by half. This should work a whole lot nicer in terms of a low profile to the ground to eliminate that wind. And the other nice thing about this is that so far we haven't really done anything to the mount to disrupt it outside of moving that pin. And by the way, look how much easier this is. See, now my hands are nice and clear, nothing in the way. They're up here now rather than right here. So this, this really, really is nice. I've been wanting to do that for a while. So now we'll be able to just pick the whole platform up by the hand truck, wheel it in and out, and it's a lot smaller than a scope buggy too. You can see this profile is really narrow. Okay, so let's go to the next step. What we have here is the platform that's going to hold the equatorial head. I took the 2x6 here and I had a nice piece of 1 8 inch ash laying around, but you could use construction 2x6 if need be. 
and that sets in right there like that on that rabbited edge. So that will uh, set right here, and then this will be screwed into here, and we'll be able to put three carriage bolts, one, two, three, right through that bottom plate. And then here's the other end of that, and that sits here like that. So now you have a nice solid box, and this will be where the equatorial head will fit. Now, I can see right here, looking at it, I've got a little bit of a ridge here, and I believe that equatorial head is about six inches round. We need to get this flush, because otherwise the equatorial head is going to be rocking on this lip right here. Uh, so I'll just run that through the joiner. These pieces measure, the top piece is 10 inches long by five and three quarters wide, but yours is going to be a little narrow. Yours should be five and a half if you're using two by six. But because of the extra thickness of this upright pieces, you'll have enough width to accommodate the head. So the rabbited is a half inch in. It goes in one half that way. And then the height is the thickness of the stock, which if you're using a two by six, that's going to be about an inch and a half. But you're going to want to get that nice and flush so that that equatorial head doesn't rock on it. The bottom piece where we're going to be taking the three carriage bolts, one, two, three, I've got that a little longer to give us a little bit better displacement, and that's 14 inches. For you guys that are metric, convert them over to metric. No big deal, though. But anyway, so that should work like that, and that's where the equatorial head is going to sit. Okay, we took a trip to the hardware store, and we're back. Half-inch PVC end caps. What they're going to do is they're going to keep this bolt that's going to level this platform goes into there so it keeps it from digging into the ground and the dirt. We've got some uh, six inch carriage bolts that we'll be cutting to length as needed. Some quarter inch uh, nuts, bag of five eighths inch nuts, large washers that are going to be uh, used for the jacks and some of these hangers, and that's going to wrap around the round steel and bolt to the bottom of the 2x4 and the bottom of the plate. And we've got some 5 8 inch all thread here. Uh, this is a 24 inch piece and this is a 36 inch piece or 3 feet and we're going to cut this in half and that'll be just about right. The object is to get these about 18 inches long and you need three of them, one for the center and one for each side. All right. What I've done here is I've put these clips here temporarily because we need to drill a hole on this other side right here. And we're going to run a carriage bolt through here and through this piece that's going to bolt back here on the back side right here. Now this is just a spacer because we have this pipe here in the middle that's sticking past the flush of back here. So this will allow us to get this snug up against this pipe by using this spacer. So these are temporary to hold it. We'll drill a hole here and then go clear through to this back piece. That's where we have our nut that's secured on the underside, just like in the ideas for a scope buggy. If you look at that, you'll get a little more information on how to do this. And then that will allow our jacks to come up and raise this platform. If you get a, a hand truck that's flush clear across, and you don't have this center one that's sticking out, then it'll be a lot easier for you. But I need to put the spacer in to clear this, and that's what that's about. Okay, so we've got our holes drilled here and here, and uh, when we get done, we'll have another one here and another one here. But what we need to do is run the long bolt through here to bolt this top down. When we run this bolt clear through, it'll be running clear through to here, right out the other side on our platform. And we're going to run it through this clip right here. Now, this clip has nothing in it right now, but it's going to have this. As we run this through, what we're going to have to do is right when it gets through there, we'll have to thread this nut and this washer like that so that it pushes this clip up against this board and then continue to run it through on the other side here and then do the same thing on the other side. We can access it through in between here and using a wrench like that, you know, to work it in and tighten it up. 
and this bolt should be just about right, should go through it all. I think I'm going to run the washer, the flathead, on this side because this will be the finished side and then let the nut end just slow down through there. Okay, what we got here is a half inch carriage bolt that is underneath of where the leveling jacks are going to be. And over here is one of the leveling jacks. Now here you see that carriage bolt, it runs all the way up through the top and that's going to cinch down our equatorial head to where it's going to tie it all together. This is really important that you cinch it completely down as one unit. Otherwise you're going to get that thing to rock no matter how many screws or how much glue you put into it. So let's take a look at that bracing in the back. Okay, so there you can see some cross diagonal bracing to tie it together. The idea is not to have so much the hand truck itself be part of the frame, but that the hand truck carries the tripod as it were. It's good that it's there because it is going to give it some support, but I believe it's important that you don't rely on that three quarter inch tubing because I think you'll see some flexure. So the idea is to just have it attached to carry everything and once it's laid down and jacked up it shouldn't be that much of a factor. You're going to be relying on the 2x6 and the jacks. So now we're looking at the front of it and you see that board there that's about uh, oh I think 9 inches wide and it goes all the way down and it ties in that bottom uh, platform where we have that carriage bolt and it ties up the single leveling jack. You see that hole there to the left. That's where the single jack is going to go. So that'll be our tripod configuration. And it's just that easy. Just roll it right off a ramp or the back of your pickup truck or whatever it is you happen to have. And uh, one-handed, two-handed, jack it up and you're good to go. We'll take a look at the rest of it. I'll show you the uh, umbrella. Uh, the low profile is going to allow us to keep the wind from coming in on this thing at night. Okay, so now here we have the sports umbrella. It's typically used like at a sporting event, outdoor event, rock concert, that sort of thing. And with this, it allows the wind to go over the scope because of the low profile, you see. Now that we're down and we're off the tripod, you can get that wind deflected. But tonight we're going to try for the Crescent Nebula with this setup. And at the end of the video, I'll put uh, what kind of data we got it. So. I hope this helps you guys, gives you some ideas, and clear skies. And thanks for watching Dakota Starry Nights.